So join me, if you will, as we try to grab our second job of the same. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Survival Specialist. It is the start of Season 2. We have many, many things to catch you up on, of course. But if you have been enjoying the series up to this point, drop a like on the video. That would be fantastic. I just said if you're if you're joying. Hey, if you're joying, who's joying? But before anything else, I just wanted to show you what sort of happened in the six months since we left Heidenheim. You can see it is now January 1st, 2039. Kim said he'd he done his part. He promised that he would try to keep them up, and he did that. He even took them nearly one step further than that in a very comfortable mid-table finish. And you might notice, in fact, that they're pretty much on for, I think, the same, if not more points without us. It's incredible. I've never really... It's, it's genuinely staggering to me. Because, really, we only signed two players on loan and changed the tactical setup a tiny little bit. Uh, that's all we really did. Didn't really put any long-term plans in place there. But yeah, 17 games played. Heidenheim sitting comfortably ninth in the league. 23 points on the board. Only three points off the European places themselves. Incredible. Um, literally, they could be on for a 46-point season as things now, which would be higher than the number of points that we got them last season. Kind of mad. When we took over at this exact point last year, they had 11 points. This year, they have more than double that. So, incredibly impressive. I'm kind of curious myself, though, who their manager is. And the manager is uh, Akaki Gogia who looks like he used to play for Union Berlin. Let's have a look. Yes, he did. He was a Union Berlin player at the start. Actually played for Heidenheim in the save. I mean, okay, you can't really ask for much more than that. Uh, then he went to Jadello. Oh, right. Okay, they're a third tier side in Germany. Uh, Energy Koppas, Unterhaking, and then, of course, Fortuna Dusseldorf. I believe, in fact, he was the manager that got Dusseldorf promoted. And then Heidenheim stole them. Or stole him, rather, from them. And, um... Uh, it's not gone super well for Fortuna Düsseldorf since then. Uh, meanwhile, Köln, who also came up, doing just fine. Hoffenheim did survive in the top flight uh, as a result of winning their playoff game, uh, but you, uh, it doesn't look like they're going to be surviving for another season. They were, they were, they got a stay of execution, and that is all. Kim and Mika spent most of the summer travelling around Europe and the rest of the world. You thought I was going to launch into a sponsor spot there, didn't you? And Kim has spent the first half of the season just chilling in Germany, enjoying his life, spending some time there. And uh, they have decided, though, that if he is going to move clubs, she's not going to come with him. It's too soon for that kind of stuff. They're going to go long distance. Hopefully, he won't be too far away anyway. He can maybe nip... I say nip back on the weekends. That's when football matches are, Matt. But he'll find a way. Kim will, Kim will surpass. Also, I know that there's always temptations to stay at clubs longer. But like, I set out the rules for this save for a very specific reason in that I wanted to sort of do these quick jobs because we're going to get cool scenarios with each one, hopefully. Anyway, so that's enough about what we left in the past. Let's have a little bit of a look at our future. This is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. Now, last season, we, as I said, got very, very fortunate in the sense that when we came back with the 1st of January, we had a job ready and available, perfect to move into. You might notice... That is not the case here. Leicester, Benevento, and Milan are the only jobs available. None of these sides are even in the relegation zone. Leicester City are nearly in the relegation zone, but that, that doesn't count. Nearly is not completely. Oh, and in case you're wondering, Brighton won the Europa Conference League 3-2. Uh, Southampton <laughs> won the Europa League 1. Of course they did. And in the Champions League, it was Real Madrid by a goal to nil uh, against Barcelona in the Johan Cruyff Arena. So Real Madrid's first Champions League in like 20 years. But yeah, so that makes our job a little bit more difficult. Now, we do thankfully have more jobs available soon, you'd like to believe. Uh, so there's very insecure jobs, like for example, Lazio. Uh, they're not getting relegated though, which is, that would be a hell of a job to take over if Lazio are in the relegation zone. But you might notice here, there is a few jobs uh, hovering around that relegation spot that are potentially uh, going to become available. So firstly, Albacete in the top flight of Spain. I bet they're rubbish. They are rich, though, apparently. There's also Pordenone in uh, Syria as well, with Nicola Bitti being their manager. And also down here, too, Laurent Battles. I mean, he's obviously not equipped for a battle, is he? Uh, as things go. You can see as well that Jonathan Woodgate is Bournemouth manager. Uh, they're struggling, but he is still stable. But So, for me, currently, although they are in good form right now, it's looking like Albacete... Paul Danone or maybe La Havre are the sort of options that are on the cards for us. But something I might consider uh, if I find that we're just struggling to get jobs is in future, maybe come back in December instead. Because I think some of the real crappy teams might sack their manager sooner because they're doing really, really poorly. Uh, also, Wayne Rooney... Um, 
apparently... Oh, stable. That's fine. Stable is fine. It's these jobs we're interested in. So uh, let's just have a little look at how La Liga is shaping up right now. So it is only... They're only two points from safety as things stand. And annoyingly look like they're putting a bit of form together, which is a bit of a shame because that would be a cool job to take over potentially. But with any luck, maybe they'll start doing poorly again. Who is the current manager of Albacete right now? It's a guy called Mateo Martinez. He's a regen. Uh, so we know nothing about him other than that. But you can see that, wow, they've actually been in the top flight for the last couple of seasons. I didn't even notice that. Uh, it's looking like it might not be for any more seasons, though. And then in Syria, Porto Noni, only two points uh, from... Oh, see, look, Foggia, that would be way better. It'd be impossible, but it'd be way better. Also, look at that, Sassuolo, top of the league by seven points. Okay, okay. Oh, and that guy I got on a free transfer for them seems to be doing all right, doesn't he? The thing is, with some of these clubs, they're completely content to just keep the manager no matter what happens because they don't expect to stay up. And lastly, there's La Arve, who I'm fairly certain were promoted last season. How are they getting on? Four po three points from safety. Okay, a bit more... Uh, of a challenge there potentially so i suspect it's likely to be one of those three uh if we get all three of them then i'll be tempted to choose the one that's furthest in the relegation fight just because you know i want as big a challenge as possible although what i would say is i don't think any of these sides are really underperforming teams they're more teams that really should or should not be in that league in the first place in terms of stature overall so that means that the squads aren't going to be as good as heidenheim you'd feel like so that might make it more of a challenge overall anyway so uh, yeah let's just uh, keep going and see what happens. We might even get less games to turn it around this time around because it depends on how long it takes these teams to sack their managers. So uh, it's Saturday today. There aren't any more games in certain leagues for a little while anyway. So this is going to be fascinating. Actually, no. I don't know why it was in February. But yeah, there is actually some games in like a week. So this is fine. We'll see how it goes. So join me, if you will, as we try to grab our second job of the save. I almost feel a bit like a vulture. We're a management vulture. We're just looming over these guys being like, hey, how you doing, Dad? You, you been sacked yet, buddy? Interestingly, the Tottenham job has now become insecure on account of them losing five in a row, including to Luton Town at home. What? Okay, so Spurs did actually sack Mike France as they've now slipped to eighth in the league. Uh, presumably, they kept running, losing more games. Uh, but also, Leicester and those teams have now filled those managerial vacancies. So that's a bit of a shame. I definitely think next season, it'd be best if we came back at December 1st instead, because I think that would give us the chance to potentially pick up one of those really, really struggling jobs. Because with those teams doing so badly, they're probably sacking their managers before January, a lot of them, it would seem. So there's a few jobs here, but like this is looking pretty fine for these clubs here. Uh, Virial are in deep trouble as well, but it's now looking like Le Havre and Albacete still struggling. Who was that other team? Pordenone have actually won a couple of games now, and as a result have pulled themselves out of trouble, annoyingly. Le Havre have actually gained ground, whereas Albacete are now sitting two points from relegation. And the next game is actually against Espanyol in the bottom of the league. So if they lose that, there's a strong chance that that job could become available. Now that we have the championship on, I just thought I'd show you how things are going down there. So the crew, Wickham and Hull are all in trouble. I wouldn't even be opposed to something like that at some point, but I feel like we have to prioritise the top five leagues, really, even though these jobs could be kind of fascinating. And I know that technically in real life, Portugal have just fractionally overtaken France as far as top five in terms of coefficient and whatnot. I was just basing it on the in-game coefficient at the time when I started the save. However, uh, a question for you, my friends. Uh, would you like to see us maybe turn on Portugal? Well, not turn on, it's already turned on, but have Portugal as an option as well as maybe the championship for next season. So do let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section below. It would just give us more potential jobs, I suppose. So interestingly, Albacete did lose to Espanyol. So that might set the ball rolling on potentially their manager's uh, head a little bit. They are still only insecure at the moment, though. That's very interesting. The <laughs> the guy who was managing La Havre, who was struggling, and his job was insecure, has now left them to join 14th place Nîmes. Uh, okay. So that now actually does leave the La Havre job available currently. Now, I'm tempted to apply for it because we wouldn't actually have to take it, but I think it'd be useful to have a job available there, particularly as they are now 18th in League... Oh, no, they were 18th before in League R. Um, when's their next game? 70, 22nd. And who are they playing? At home against Khan, who are actually 9th in the league. So if they they could slip further. Um, interesting. Spurs have literally appointed a guy called El Maestro. Uh, I see what they're going for here. Oh, wow. Spain just went hammer time on both Almeria and Albacete. And also via the lead. But in fact, isn't that the entire bottom... Th Hang on a minute. Uh, Almeria actually aren't even in the top flight. But... Uh, wait. Both Valladolid and Albacete both sacked their managers on the same day. Uh, Albacete lost at home to Real Sporting, and Valladolid lost away at Osasuna. Ha ha ha. Oh, okay. Now things start to get a bit more interesting, friends, because they are bottom of the league. I know it's only three points again. Um, so of the two, I'd obviously be preferring um, Albacete. Then again, Valladolid are newly promoted. So there is that as a factor as well. Their squad is unlikely to be good. Media prediction 17th. 
and their reading prediction is 15th. So actually, but I suppose the, the points gap is kind of more of the key. They have only won three games out of 22 so far. Oh, okay. Well, we know we're going to apply for both of those jobs as well, for sure. Now things are starting to move a little bit more. Harry Kane is Palace manager, by the way. I didn't notice that. Okay, so we've been offered a job interview with Laav, which I figured would be the case. Uh, deep commitment. Uh, I don't know. You want to be careful with that one, uh, Jean-Marc, but let's do it. We will learn the language. Kim is a polyglot. Unemployed for a fairly long time. It's been like six months, Alan. Chill. You're in the relegation zone, buddy. Pipe down. Apologies, my face cam died there. We were at the half an hour mark of recording. But yeah, that's one job in the back pocket that we should have potential. It's definitely my least favourite of the options to this point, just because they are in a slightly more pre pre uh, preferable position, so to speak. Well, I really would like to manage in France, and hopefully we will, because Coupe de France, come on. Okay, so things are getting even more interesting again now, as both Pordenoni and Empoli are back in the mire, so to speak. But they are still both only one point off of safety as things go. And so Swallow have really bottled their lead. Christ. In case you're wondering, Sassuolo actually came third last season in the end. Uh, lost out on head-to-head -to, -head to Milan in the end. Okay, so Laav have come in. Uh, so we'll obviously delay this. We get two weeks of delays, hopefully. So that's fine. So it should hopefully give uh, the other two a chance to come in for us if they want us. Given that in France right now... Uh, like, oh, they have to 19th now. But it's still only by a single point that they're in the relegation zone. Mallorca have also sacked their manager too, but they're further away. It's another massive six-pointer down at the bottom with Albacete and Leganes which they are at home. So if they were to win that, things could start to change for us. It does bother me slightly that despite us being the leading candidate for both of these jobs, neither of them have actually come along and said, yeah, we'd like to interview. You know, we're in deep trouble right now, friends. Uh, annoyingly, <laughs> Albacete beat Laganes, who are now bottom of the league. <laughs> All of these jobs are available, including Mallorca right now. Laganes is probably going to come up as well at some point soon. Um, I might apply for the Mallorca one too, since they're in there as well. Uh, this is getting ridiculous now. <laughs> okay. I just applied for the Mallorca job and they've already filled the role. They only sacked the manager like more recently than the other two and the other two haven't even interviewed anyone yet. Oh, now, now they want to interview us. Finally, okay. Anthony Bouillon is the man, is the manager, is the chairman. Lack of experience managing in this country. We managed Osasuna for six months. I'll have you know, it's more than six months in fact. Okay, now we'll do via the lead, but they're not in the relegation zone at the moment, so I wouldn't be able to take it at the moment anyway. They're expecting to avoid relegation. Interesting actually, considering their media prediction was lower. Wow, they have a huge budget, comparatively speaking. Eight million quid. I mean, literally, it's transfer deadline day, so it would be pointless to us at this point anyway. Then we can get one deal over the line if they appoint me today. Okay, La Arva back again. That much we expected, so we'll delay one more time, which they've agreed to. Okay, so both Albacete and Valladolid have approached us, which is good, because that now gives us three jobs on the table. Uh, now, the interesting situation we've got here is that... Well, let's just take a look. Liga Santander... Vidalid, firstly, are outside the relegation zone. We literally can't take the job because they're not in the relegation zone. And Albacete are only in there on... Well, I mean, look at this. But, so there's that. And then when it comes to League 1, you've got La Havre, who are in the relegation zone. Uh, but again, it's only over one point over this. It's technically one point there. Uh, it, it's a tough one because of the two, I would argue that it would be harder to stay in Spain, even with the same points, just because there's more good sides in Spain. It would depend on their run-ins and stuff. And plus, with the relegation playoff spot, isn't a guaranteed relegation spot, and there is three in Spain. I think it will really heavily depend on... I think what job we get will heavily depend on the, the results of the fixtures this weekend. Because there's a load of games on the 5th where... Who are La Havre playing? They're at home against Montpellier. Who are a sort of eh, okay mid-table side. They could win that, honestly. Whereas Albacete are actually playing Mallorca away and Valladolid host Villarreal. Poor. I, I genuinely feel like which of those three, because those are the only three jobs available currently, that we take will heavily depend on what the results are in the fixtures over the course of this weekend. And I think that's the best way to do it. We really just want to be taken over the team that's in the worst position, in theory. There are still jobs potentially going to come up in Italy. And also in Spain with Leganes, but it would be the same kind of thing. Uh, there's, you know, Bordenone are the one that sort of stand out to me there. And they're two points from safety, but they haven't sacked their manager yet. And you know how long these things can take. Needless to say, no matter which club we take over, we're going to have less time in order to impose ourselves. And you know what, Heidenheim, it did take us a little while just to get ourselves going. So that's definitely going to work against us. Plus, I think Spain is just a tougher league because there's less bad sides. Some of the sides that are on the edge of the like European spots in Germany are often sort of, they're beatable teams, as we saw. Whereas in Spain, there's a lot more, I think there's a gap, the, the gap is bigger between the sides in those sort of six, seven spots towards the bottom as it is in Germany. And we have until Monday the 7th because that's the day that La Havre will come back, basically. So we'll know the weekend results after that point. Watch there be a, a, a swathe of sackings across the weekend, like Pordenone again. And then we're like, well, damn. 
But I think at this point, even if they were to sack their manager, it would take so long that they could actually just get themselves back out of the problem. And I think we're really going to have to just choose whichever one is in the worst position out of those three teams after this weekend. That's the job we take, I feel like. Because there won't be another match, as far as I can tell, in between the delays. <laughs> it's just so predictable, isn't it? BT's been sacked by Pordenone. <sighs> so, actually, as you can see now, all three of them are now in the relegation zone. <laughs> God damn it, man. All right. First thing I'm going to do is just apply for Pordenone anyway, just because we need a backup. Uh, let's check Spain at uh, France first. 19th place, La Havre. Ah, aha. They're now three points from safety with a minus 30 goal difference. That's, what did they lose by? 4-0 at home to Montpellier. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. That's starting to look worse and worse here. This is potential, right? So they have three points from safety. Technically one if you count that. So we do have to factor that in as well. And Santander, oh, okay, so they're literally both three points from safety as well. This is not making it easy. Every team is three points from safety. Now, the reason why I'd be leaning towards of the three currently at this point, which we have to make a decision, Albacete, is because they are three points from safety, as all of them are, but they're actually three points from automatic safety, whereas La Havre could still get, they're only one point off of the relegation playoff spot. So that is still a, a route. It's It would be slightly easier. That, and I feel like it's a slightly tougher league for Albacete to potentially survive in. And at the moment, their head-to-head -head with Valladolid puts them below them, it would seem. And also, it seems like they've had a lot of quite winnable fixtures as of late, and they've failed to do anything in them. So I think, of the three, it's likely to be Albacete Balompi, which, firstly, what a great name for a team. Um, That might well be the one, friends, of, of the three right now. Um, if I, I realise there's always going to be discussion about which of the three, but I feel like, bear in mind, we're going to have to come back to France anyway, because... The whole point is to save a team from the top five leagues. Uh, but I feel like right now, this would be a bit more of a challenge, I think, than... Uh, where are La Havre expected to... They were newly promoted. They're expected to finish 15th, but they are in deep trouble. Whereas La Havre are expected to finish 18th, and they are 19th currently. Feels like one of those damned if I do, damned if I don't type of situations where I just kind of have to make a decision. And weighing up the options, and I've explained the reasoning, I think out of the three, it's going to be Albacete. I think. That's, that's my choice for now. Would I prefer it if they were more seven or eight points from safety? Absolutely. But I think with the starting coming back in December thing, I think that's going to allow us to maybe pick up one or two of those jobs or at least give us more time. So it would be like January 6th, January 5th kind of time instead of February. So we'd have a transfer window with some of the teams as well, potentially. But I, I think that's what we kind of need to do. So I think that's the one we're going to go with. And there's no midweek fixtures in there. So this won't change potentially before we get the actual job offer. So as much as I like the idea of Lahav, I think this is going to be where we walk away. Okay, so here we are. Uh, they've approached us again. We know what the situation is. We wouldn't have any money to spend anyway because of the way the situations work. The they're all shut. That's the situation. They expect us to fight bravely against relegation. That's not really important, really, because we want to try to keep them up. And if we don't, we don't. You know, that's the plan. So we're going to start negotiations with Albacete. Uh, Two-year deal, that's fair enough. 21 grand a week. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, they might not like this, but that's fine. If they if we keep them up, are they really going to care? Imagine if they act us at the end and be like, sorry, you've kept us up, but we just didn't like the football. Alrighty then, exit talks, let's crack it. Sorry, via the lead, but you have a better head-to-head, -head, lads. Boom! Kim Min is in. Lovely stuff. So there we go. Oh, Tony Cruz is the director of football. Jesus Cañadas Mosillo, Mosillo, or Mosillo is the assistant manager right now. Oh, <laughs> we are now the manager of Albacete, a club I really know very, very little about. I do believe they were a sort of regular top flight contender in La Liga in maybe the 90s? The name does ring a bell from like my early experiences of watching football, but we'll probably be totally wrong about that. Let's crack on. Well, that's convenient. They happen to play the same shape. I didn't even look at that, actually. Happen to play the same shape that we do. This time, not going to fail to schedule a press conference. We don't want Kim Min mistakes from before. And we're in. Min takes charge at Albacete. Let's have a little look at the club for himself. 26,000 capacity. To, that's a 4-4-2. I've been lied to. Lied to, I say. Um, nice kits they've got going on as well here. Some lovely stuff uh, coming up. Bit of white. Bit of That's gorgeous. I'm really a big fan of that. Uh, they have actually won. That's the second tier, isn't it? So let's have a look at their league history, in fact. So uh, was I right about what I was suspecting? Not. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's the 90s. They were a sort of seventh place in 92 as well. Not bad. Uh, then got relegated down there too. Had a couple of seasons in the top flight in the early noughties as well. Went down as far as the third tier. Wow. They, oh, oh, they are actually back in La Liga in the second tier of the save. A second season of the save, interestingly. Had a couple of spells in the uh, top flight as well. And in fact, they're actually enjoying their third season. I say enjoying, not enjoying very much their third season, having come 12th last year. So there might well be a squad here, actually. Let's have a look at the running before we do anything else. So starting off, 
So Real Sociedad had fourth place, ninth place, eighth place, Real Madrid in the cup, Atletico, Oviedo, Barcelona. Oh, wow. Villarreal, Sevilla. Oh, Jesus, that is a tough run of games. Uh, then we got Wesker. Okay, a bit more like it. Osasuna. Oh, I want revenge so bad. Cadiz, uh, Valencia, and Valladolid on the final day of the season. Oh, that is a very, very difficult run in. Very, very difficult indeed. Uh, look at this spell of games where they were playing teams down towards them, really. Uh, this is the sort of challenge I think we might well come a cropper in, but we're going to give it our damnedest go. Okay, I think we have made the right choice there, just on account of, now that I'm seeing their fixtures as well, I think that's going to be insanely difficult, but you know the plan. We put it into place with Heidenheim. In those big games, if we can get ourselves in front, we shut the hell down. And against the other teams, we give it a crack, of course, and see what we can come up with. You never know, maybe Kim Minbull will come in here and do magic as well. Once again, I mean, it's a lot of yellow for a golden generation, but still, hey, it's nice to see. We've got a youth intake, uh, well, next month, month after. Okay, then. Well, let's have a little cheeky look at the squad. Okay, there's some decent, I mean, decent players is, is decent for us, I suppose. Or well, this is managed by the league. I actually can never remember. Top score at the moment is Esteban Paleo with 11 goals off of an XG of five. That is a really, really good sign. I don't think you understand how good of a sign that is. Although, my man Bellaribi here, Jesus, underperforming much. I suppose it kind of balances out between the two there, doesn't it, really? But still, so Esteban Paleo. Please just tell me you're a... Oh, okay. No finishing ability, but has good composure. Um, solidly quick. Six foot one as well. Likes to run the goalkeeper. So that's actually quite a useful attribute to have. Great passing of vision as well, which will actually go quite nicely with the way that we play. Because although we use an inside forward over a complete forward... Sorry, not inside forward. An advanced forward. The passing and vision is still going to be very, very helpful in building up our attacks. He... Re oh, we got a lot of goals in the cup, actually. But still, I, I think he could be very, very good. And hopefully, he doesn't like big matches, which is a shame. But I think he will help us a lot. Got Antonio Jesus as well, who could occupy this role quite nicely with his good composure. Could sit a bit deeper. Uh, maybe not as the Mez. I don't know. But he is really, really good as well. So here's Bellaribi. Left-footed, inside forward. He's like He is technically a striker, but the thing is, he doesn't really have the best striking attributes. I think he's the sort of player that... How good is his right foot? Weak. Which isn't ideal. But you know how we've got away with plenty of times in the past playing a, le a right-footed... Sorry, left-footed inside forward on the right. Because they do seem to... We rely on them for a lot of crosses too. Finishing and composure are okay. And I think he'll do a decent enough job there, potentially. So, pleased with that. Got Inge Lurken. Oh, got a Norwegian. Oh, hang on. He's left-sided as well. Okay, so that left side is a bit stacked. Maybe we could play the other guy on the right. Gutierrez is a ball-winning midfielder who... Oh, yes. Ha! <laughs> I know he's right-footed. What's his weak foot like? Weak. Ah, it's not ideal, but still very, very good. Only 19 as well. Alex Salas, 6 1. Yes. Lovely centre back. Another centre back is Nelson Perez. Oh, six foot six. Not fantastic on the ground, but tell you what. Whew. And there's Benjamin, who's the right back, and that's totally fine. We don't, we like right backs on this save. It's fine, although he isn't training very well. And then there's also. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Rafael Ceballos, where do you play, sir? Yes, I play all the positions. What the hell? He's only played at right back this season. He's 27. I don't think I've ever seen a player whose positional chart is quite so bizarre. So he can play right back, centre back, left back, DM, right wing back, right mid, left mid, right attacking mid and striker. But don't you dare put him in the centre of midfield. Oh, no. I've no doubt that there's some other quality in here, particularly as this is not actually sorted by ability anymore. <laughs> I've just missed out on a few guys, no doubt, in here too. Danielson Rocker as well is a right sided player. There you go. Lovely stuff. He, with the, that kind of composure, could definitely, clear, could be a bit of a Mishtal type player. Although, we've got options. He's Bolivian as well. So obviously we'll get faces in for the guys for next episode. So next episode, we're going to start off with, as we did against, uh, with Heidenheim, with uh, with the Karlsruhe and Watson Magic Games. So we're going to come back with a, a battle of the Royals. Uh, we've had Real Madrid there. Now we're going to have Real Sociedad and then Real Zaragoza in back-to-back -back games. Neither of those are going to be easy. I mean, fourth place, Real Sociedad. And then at home against Real Zaragoza. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Real Zaragoza in ninth. That's a, a tough one, but I feel like we've got more chance there. But you just never know. This is going to be crazy, crazy difficult. We can rest players for the second leg against Real Madrid here because we're already 4-0 down from the home leg. So, if you've enjoyed this and you're looking forward to our time at Albacete, if you know anything about the club as well, do let me know in the comments. I'm always interested to learn about the new clubs that we've taken charge of. This is going to be a, a really, really tough one, despite that points deficit not being the biggest. I think this is going to be much more difficult than Heidenheim, and I'm really, really up for that. I, I want a battle, and that's what I'm hoping that we're going to get ourselves. So, if you've enjoyed this, drop a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe as you're on Twitch, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays. Go follow that too, and I'll join you guys tomorrow with our first couple of games in charge against Real Sociedad and Real Zaragoza. At the very least, Kim Min has two days to get himself over to Spain and get himself sorted. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Happy Bye-bye.